All right, welcome back to episode three of Exploring Arkansas. Today, we are going through from our previous destination, which was, which was Jonesboro, or Jonesboro, however you want to pronounce it. And we're heading all the way to Texarkana, which is basically the border between Texas and, uh, and Arkansas. And I think, <laughs> I think I remember uh, for this whole event, the, uh, SCS saying that uh, Texarkana doesn't count, I think. Or it's got to be the Arkansas side. I think there's like two parts to it. I don't know. Um, I guess we'll find out eventually. But yeah, we're heading to the Arkansas side of uh, of Texarkana with some pelleted animal food. I've done my research this time. I actually know what it is before we pick it up. I don't. I don't think I even found out what it was the last time that we uh, that we hauled. It was some sort of oh boy, that's close. It was some sort of crane. I did not mean to open my window. We'll close the back up. Oh my god, I can't even see like the other side. Goodness me. All right, there we go. It's just a nightmare not actually being able to see the back. Like the, the back section of the truck with the wheels. I'm having to use like a smaller mirror. Which is really annoying. But I think we're managing it. There we go. We also have this side. I think we're good. Just about. Not sure how. But we managed. We'll uh, raise the fifth. Raise those legs. Get the fifth wall locked in. And uh, this is one of the more cooler looking uh trailers that we've uh we've picked up damn oh i wonder if no i was saying i wonder if we're gonna have to, if we're gonna see the unloading process but i think that's already realistically if you actually own the trailers all right so let's uh, make let's what was i even trying to say let's make our way down south i didn't even know oh my god okay that was strange <laughs> i didn't know i was gonna say i didn't know other trucks use this um area at all i didn't know they come through here that's really flipping cool to see even if they do these spawn weirdly i would actually rather them you know come into here realistically oh where are we going um Hmm. Let's uh, let's back it up. No diddy, and go the correct way this time. So I was gonna say, yeah, it's actually really cool seeing like other ve other vehicles. Okay, this whole inverted thing is actually not really working for me. Why did it work? It worked at some point. It worked at some point, and it really made sense. But it's not working the same way anymore. I don't know why. Normal. Let me make it normal. Let me make it normal. I think it was like sometimes I need it to sort of be the other way. Ah, I see it now because literally when you turn it towards the left, obviously the rear of the truck goes left. Or the trailer, obviously. But, nah. No. I'm happy doing it like this for now. If I need to, I will use the uh, the mouse. Alright, I think that's enough. That is plenty. We'll use the uh, 1080 degrees that this wheel has to offer. If you are curious or interested at all about the wheel I use, it is the Thrustmaster T300 RS GT. And honestly, part of the appeal was the beyond 900 degrees rotation. It's not a great deal, to be honest. Beyond 900 degrees, but it's enough to make a difference. But what I'm really looking forward to, like I alluded in episode one, is uh, getting my hands on. At some point, nothing's happened just yet. But at some point, getting my hands on uh, Mos a Moser base along with the uh, TSW wheel, and I think that would make for an incredible wheel cam. This is great, this is nice, having like a regular wheel, but I think there are levels. I think it's fair to say 
there are levels when it comes to the steering wheel game. I do love this vast field of like all these bundled hay. We do have a lot of fields and farmland on uh, both American and Euro truck sims, but it, it's, it never looks as big. Right? Like, you never see the field go into the far distance as it would in real life. It always seems to end too soon. Maybe, I don't know, I'm a sucker for details, so I notice things like that. And maybe, I mean, it is not that big of, big of a deal, generally speaking. But, yeah, I doubt anyone actually cares, was my point. <laughs> but, yeah, all of these fields on, on both the right and the left go out really far. And, I don't know, it actually adds to the immersion a little bit. Fair play to the uh, to the developers, man. So we've already clocked almost 240 miles on the clock. And we figured out last episode that uh, the mileage had nothing to do with why we were limited to 14,000 RPM when revving. That was just a uh, unusual thing. Which I think I have actually heard of being a thing. Oh, we took that a little too quickly. I have heard of that being a thing in cars, in the more modern, in more modern cars. I think I've also noticed is there's some sort of yeah, the wiper, the wiper stuff is on the left stalk. Usually you'll be on the right stalk. I'm pretty sure. I'm assuming that's strictly retarder, probably. I think that is the retarder mostly. It does look like there are there is some other stuff on there. You guys who are more knowledgeable in the area of trucking, more specifically uh, in North America, can probably uh, help me out with uh, what each little thing symbolizes, other than the retarder. One thing I do like is a little gold pit boy at the front. I was torn, as you can probably tell from the, from the video on last episode. Hold on just a moment. Oh my god, we almost crashed. I saw what looked like a really big ass turtle. It probably was just a rock, but it really looked like a turtle. And I almost crashed. But yeah, I, I, I struggled to decide on whether I wanted a pink or a silver emblem at the front, but I settled on the gold. I was worried that maybe the gold would be pushing it for like the sort of subtleness he says in a liveried chromed truck but yeah i thought it would be a little bit excessive and um i think it's just right it's, also, it's on the limit but on the right side of that limit it hasn't exceeded it There was a recent update to the lighting, which made it so that l the lighting inside the cab, and this applies to both Euro Truck and American Truck Sim, the lighting inside the cab represented real light in the sense, for example, so if you've ever driven past like an emergency scene on any of the games, you'd notice that the emergency light from the emergency vehicles would basically, as you're driving past the scene, would just illuminate the whole cabin and it would be super, super bright. Well, since that particular update, the lighting is now more realistic and so light will only enter the cab through means that make sense, i.e. the windows and nothing else. And especially in VR, it makes quite a big difference talking of vr if you watch my streams you'll know that i'm a huge vr fan and do let me know whether you want to see gameplay like this in virtual reality you'd still get the wheel cam but the game itself would be virtual reality i'll be happy to give it a go for at least one episode we're back going towards uh bald knob that's lovely isn't it I would actually love to try that out for an episode. The only issue is sometimes I find recording VR is a little bit iffy. 
we've done a couple VR streams now. Um, one for American Truck Tim, and I was sort of giving it a try for the first time. And then a proper stream on Euro Truck with a VR headset. When I did, uh, we did a convoy with a lot of uh, a lot of the people from chat, and that was a pretty good experience. Even as a viewer, it's a pretty good experience. Sometimes I worry that you lose the quality. I said this many a time, and I'll say it again. What you see right now in terms of the game is not what I see in my Quest Two. Maybe in something like a Primax Crystal or a Crystal Primax, whichever way it is. Or one of the more high-end headsets maybe it is quite close to what you guys are seeing right now but personally on the quest 2 which is of course on the budget side it's a lot more basic it looks closer to like 480p I think even saying 720p would push it so yeah I'll say it looks more like 480p and then even that might be stretching it a little bit in itself so it's not this crystal clear beautiful quality and so i always worry that maybe just maybe that's what might come across or the minute that it's not exactly this i get a little worried see i don't know what you guys' view is on visual quality when it comes to the videos you watch mostly gaming videos i'm talking but for me, I'm a sucker for like visual quality and eye candy, hence the 4K monitor, for example. And whenever I can do 4K, I do. I actually considered it. I know I mentioned it in the first episode. Um, that was an accident, <laughs> recording it in 1080p. But th the previous episode and this one haven't been. And that's more just playing it safe than anything. I'm currently using the CPU to sort of encode instead of the GPU due to some technical issues uh on the stream recently and so i switched over to cpu encoding and i've kept that same setting for uh video recording and i just don't want to overstress the cpu with 4k recording playing in 4k shouldn't be too big of an issue but recording it could add it could basically be the camel that the camel the straw that breaks the camel's back. We have just seen Texacana on the uh, highway board. So we are getting somewhat close. I'm expecting this journey to be more or less as long as the previous one. So a decent, like I said last time, a bite-sized chunk um, of a journey. Let me know if you'd prefer to see longer episodes like the first one i think the first one is in the region of 15 minutes or so altogether i actually wouldn't mind doing that and then maybe we could squeeze in two or maybe even three runs uh, per video i'm also planning on doing a similar thing with euro truck sim we've got the greece dlc pretty much around the corner now i'm expecting it to release no later than the end of october i'd be surprised if it's a november release or beyond and so I'm expecting, should time permit, that I do the same thing with that as well. Completely vanilla, well, not completely vanilla. We have pretty much a similar kind of mod structure to what we have now with just the basic workshop stuff. To add just that little bit of realism. But the plan is to explore Greece to its fullest, hopefully enjoy it, as we do. We've also got the new e-trailers over there to explore uh the daf has been updated so i'll probably do a whole daf x e-trailer x greece <laughs> thing and see how that goes thank you very much for all the views on the first episode by the way right now it's only on like 70 something um and it's been a week i think which is 70 views in a week isn't the best stat ever but for American Truck Sim on this channel it's actually pretty good considering I know a lot of you are well probably not a lot of you watching the video but a lot of the subscribers and a lot of the uh, stream viewership is from fans of the train simulation genre and although this is in the similar area in terms of simulation there is a fair bit different when you compare trains 
of history and trucks. So whether you guys are here from the same content in general or whether you've just come across this channel because of the American truck sim content, I just wanted to say thank you. Appreciate all the support. I am open to feedback. Like literally, you guys are the viewers, right? So <laughs> you're in charge to a degree, of course. I can't accommodate every single possible request, for example. But I'm happy to work with you. And as much as I'm having fun playing the game for myself and driving around, and it's what I'd probably do off content, whether it's streaming or making a video, I still do this for you guys, right? For the most part. So it wouldn't really make sense for me to do things for you, but do them my way and my way only, if that makes sense. So please, please, please feel free to share any feedback, advice. Give me ideas what you'd want to see as well. I do get a, few, a fair few ideas for like Tracing World on those um, streams, and I do implement a lot of them. So, you know, I do listen to you. I do this for you, and it's only right that it's basically a joint work, joint enterprise kind of thing. And it helps me out because sometimes I do run out of ideas. One thing I find myself not being too fussed about, so we're only about 40 miles or so away now. One thing I found that I'm not too fussed about is the amount of traffic. So I did have a traffic density mod initially because I wasn't content with the amount of traffic in the vanilla game. But between last episode and this episode, I haven't even noticed like the roads being dead. Got on the green light so we can skip the way station fortunately. But yeah, I haven't noticed the game world feeling dead. This is really cool with the trees and, and stuff. This looks really, really nice. And I think that's a testament to just the general progress that SES tend to make with their games. I compared them a lot to other developers on my streams and the proof is always in the pudding. I said recently that, you know, a studio or a developer or a publisher or whoever works on a game and pumps it out can spend all day saying how much work they've put into the game how much care they've taken the features they've implemented but at the end of the, the, the day realistically the only thing that's going to tell us truly how much work went into the game is the end result and I found that maybe I just miss it because like I don't watch the streams but in the blogs at least I don't really see SES pushing for the whole, hey, look at us. Welcome to Texacana, we're here. Hey, look at us. Um, look how much work we've done. Look, we've worked so hard. Oh my God, I almost missed my exit. Oh my God. I was so sure that we had to remain on the highway. Jesus Christ, do not try that at home. But yeah, I've never really seen SES do the whole, hey, look at us thing. And yet their work screams it, you know? And I've heard mixed reviews, I think, personally, for the recent DLC. But I'm actually really impressed with this one, man. I don't, again, like I touched on, I think it was the last episode. I don't look at one big feature, right? When it comes to realism or simulation. I look for the general feel, the general experience. And the general feel I get, the general experience I have when playing American Truck Sim, and if we're talking SES in general, Euro Truck Sim as well, is a lot of the time, wow. Because I just see so much that, yes, at the end of the day, I know, for example, I'm not in real life. I know that I'm not playing on a one-to-one -one scale map. But there's enough there to make it feel like you're there, to make you feel immersed. And to do that with the limited, let's say, scale that SES work in, I think is amendable. I 
I do really like the sound. I didn't think I had sound mods, but surely I have. Especially hearing the Jake break on the train last... You what? I'm not sure what signal I went through. I think, because this happened to me last time as well. I think... Yeah, I think I should be on the left lane when I turn the way I just did. And move to the right. That was cheeky, isn't it? And then move to the right later on. Because I've been firing that thing three times now in total. In what seems like a completely legal move. And unless it's some sort of bug, which I'd be surprised if it were. I think it's the positioning of my vehicle on the road that's causing these issues. So yeah, I'm going to try and be careful of that in the future. I do it more for convenience. So like if I move instantly to that lane, I ain't got to worry about doing it later on. By the end of the day, the law is the law, rules are rules, regulations are regulations, so it doesn't really matter what I find uh, great. It's more what I should be doing. One thing I did say recently was that I wished that there was an option to just reveal the secret roads. I know the whole shtick of secret roads is like to explore and find them, but playing the way I do and having and having the markers for like the no entry markers basically uh, not visible means that I can't really take those kind of risks you know if I had the markers there and I, I saw at the beginning of a road that didn't have blockers then I'd probably think to myself yeah this is quite a, clearly well potentially a secret road when I don't have any blockers, <laughs> it's a gamble. It's a 50-50. Or honestly, the odds are probably worse than that. So, in that case, it would be nice to just have the ability to just turn that whole thing off. And just let me see all the roads. So that if there's a small, cool, different road that I can take, then I can do that. Because realistically, the secret roads are actually bloody cool. And I think I touched on, on the fir in the first episode... I actually enjoy um, the challenge of driving on difficult roads, driving a large vehicle on difficult roads. And a lot of the time, from what I see in pictures or other people's videos, a lot of the time those roads are challenging, right? And it's a bit of a shame that I miss out on that because I can't risk banging up the truck <laughs> for the sake of guessing um, which road is secret, which road is not. And also, I don't know where they go. So it could just be a thing where it joins back on the road that I'm currently on. Or it could be a thing where I'm taking the complete opposite way. I just don't really know. And on the RPM map, the Reinfeld uh, Fowls map that I touched on in the first episode... That did have some secret roads that I found out by accident. Literally completely by accident. I think I went to do a U-turn. Oh my god, why would you do that, mate? Why would you do that? Was there even a need? Like, there's no one in front of him. Or her. What was the need? Whoops. But then I looked the complete opposite direction. What was the need? Oh, I'm thirsty. Oh, I was thirsty. Um, so yeah, I did find some secret roads by accident on the RPM map. I was trying to do a U-turn after missing my uh, missing my turn, my my initial turn. Ooh, let's slow all the way down. See, this is the thing, right? We have this like rugged truck, and it can just take this sort of terrain because it's like lifted pretty much. Whereas that that, that Kenworth was like quiet low. Even the horses are excited to see me. I love the fact that animals are dynamic on here. Even though they do move a little bit stiff. <laughs> I think I'd rather that stiff movement than them being completely static. Got old Farmer John there. What's a farmer's name? Johnson? Farmer Johnson? I don't feel like it's, it's American enough. Farmer... I don't know. I don't know. Let me know. Let me know in the comments. Give me some American farmer names. Got a scarecrow there. I know a good name for a scarecrow. Jim. I think the name Jim suits a scarecrow pretty well. But yeah, this terrain was exactly the reason this uh, truck stood out to me. I can just go at 
decent speeds. And not worry about uh, scraping and damaging the bottom. There we go. Almost. Almost. There we go. Pull the handbrake. Put her in neutral. Oh, I love these. I'm a sucker for like cool tail lights, but not overdone. You, you can get them overdone sometimes, but I think those are perfect. Beautiful. Right. Another excellent delivery, just like last time and the time before that, I think. I don't remember. I knew we were late. I think it was, but I think we still got excellent. We still did pretty decently. So uh, yeah, that is it. Thank you once again for joining me for episode three. Hopefully we can get episode four out pretty soon. And until then, if I don't see you guys on the streams, if I don't see you guys in another video, have a lovely rest of your day. Take care of each other. Take care of yourselves. Stay safe. Health is wealth. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. 